All right. My first pool skateboarding adventure started in the city of Norwalk. It was the late 80s, like 87, around that time. I'm in, you know, fifth or sixth grade, man. I'm, I can't even remember exactly what grade I was in, but I remember my crew. It was this kid, Tad, and David, and Rory, and a couple other guys, and we were literally like fifth grade skating together, and this was like during the beginning of World Industries, because I remember having a Mike Vallely board with the, the very first one, not the dual nose or dual tail, but the, the elephant, and... um Anyhow, I remember back then, first pool we skated was just some vacant house in the neighborhood. And somehow we had the bright idea to look over the fence. And I remember we would, you know, back then skateboards had uh, flat tails. It's not like the rounded freestyle shapes you see here today, like the what they call popsicle sticks. Like back in the 80s, skateboards actually had shape to it and you could distinguish nose from tail and you could set the board up on the tail and prop it up against the wall and climb up on the trucks and look over the fence and oftentimes that's how we'd find skate spots because we we're all like short little guys so that made it a lot easier it was like having a mini ladder and somehow we figured out there was a pool at this house and we went in there and there was a couple trash cans already on site and we drained that sucker it had about i'd say three to four feet of black water and we used plastic and metal trash cans to bucket that thing out and it took probably about a week or so to do and before long we were in there making kick turns you know more than halfway up the face wall or not really the face wall is more of like a side to side on the side walls like we're mostly half piping the deep end so and we really had no concept of waterfall deep end shallow i mean that's all like pretty basic right i mean if you grow up swimming you know that you know you ain't diving into the three foot section and um but you know this was years before we would ever do any grinds or drop-ins and you know it was the first pull we didn't have any name for it and it didn't last very long and you know it was just a pretty odd experience and you know it was just another skate spot and that was literally at the end of the block from where i you know one of the kids i grew up skating with this little this kid jonathan and right across the street from my old elementary school where I went to kindergarten and uh, learned how to do long board slides on the curbs that were there out front. And um, pretty rad little area now that I think about it. A lot of action in that little zone. And I was fortunate to have the freedom to explore and you know bounce around and try different stuff and you know really find myself and um you know it was a lot of fun and um so shoot by that point my second pull is about maybe a mile down the road from there in the same neighborhood just on the other side of it and strangely enough this pull was a left hand kidney and this was more of like a face wall like dropping into you know from the shallow end and you're like forced to carve under the light i mean we were there i mean man well, back then nobody was going over the light like that was like double overhead and you were just trying to make that make the bowl so that was pretty sketchy at best um my third pull ended up being the nude bowl and my dad was rad enough to somehow get directions to it and my first trip there our car overheated and we ended up taking that road at like 40 miles an hour and man if you've been there if you in a just a regular 
family sedan, that's like quite a bit for a vehicle with no suspension or large tires. And man, that was just like the most hilarious first trip. And it was already a scene when I got there. You know, I'm like 12 years old, rolling up to some sketchy spot in the middle of nowhere, you know, with my dad and um, my stepbrother and sisters. And, you know, it was pretty freaking rad, man. I mean, I wasn't grinding back then, but I had already learned wall rides, so I could, was able to skate through the shallow end. And it was more like a wall ride to me. That's what I just remember thinking. That's why I always liked the midsection and shallow end of pools. Because when I was a kid, those were like just like doing a wall ride. And I always thought that was so cool. And um, yeah, I got to skate there. Got the graffiti in it when I was a kid. Wrote my name somewhere in there. And uh, it was all shot up at the time. I remember there was big gouges in the face wall and shotgun shells and sketchy people hanging out. But that's how that spot was in the mid to late 80s. And, you know, it was a fun experience. Went back a week later with my mom, and that's where I got those pictures. And I actually ollied up that little stage that was right next to the midsection. So back then, I'm cracking, you know, ollieing up picnic tables. But I hadn't quite really put a whole lot of time into pools. It was just one of those things that I, you know, would just come across and skate when I could. Just like drainage ditches or wall rides or a cool schoolyard or anything like college campus church shopping center you know it all kind of fell into the same category just another skate spot so yeah man as much as i could and um you know pretty rad third pull nude bull man can't go wrong with that age 12 and i feel like that set me up for success particularly in the pool realm because you know, not really knowing much about it and already having cleaned out my first pool by hand, I was already used to having to work to skate. So that was already built into my mindset. So that would be like the equivalent of making like a long drive or going out of your way is like nothing different than sweeping or shoveling or bucketing or sometimes patching and painting so it's like whatever it takes and you know unwittingly i've adopted that mindset and carried it with me through you know four